Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Long Drive. You guys have been waiting for this one for a while. The last video was so popular, and I can certainly see why. I feel like this game is just everything about creepy and comfy, you know? It's got long stretches of road where you're alone with your thoughts. It's got little distractions off to the side and little stories for you to make as you progress. But mostly it's just you and the atmosphere of what surrounds you. And the atmosphere that you make for yourself. Now, don't expect this to become a regular series, but do expect it to be something that I revisit occasionally. Because I feel like this is the kind of game that you can't really come into with intentions or even really long-term goals. And it's the kind of thing that whenever you feel like it, you just sit down and let yourself zone out and let your stream of consciousness do its thing for a while. And then again, I start to doubt my consciousness when I see the landscape falling away before me like this. I was thinking that I might come back and make this a, a somewhat regular series, simply because I thought that I had driven, well, about a thousand kilometers the first time, and that the road is five thousand long. Uh, however, as some of you have pointed out, I was completely misreading my gauges, and in fact, the uh, front page confirms I've only driven about a hundred and ten kilometers, and who, who knows how much of that was off-road. So, once again, we're driving down this desert, and really I think I'll just be musing on, well, some of the things that uh, come to mind. And just what makes the idea of a road trip so appealing in the creepy and comfy sort of mindset. I've had a lot of time to think about this, and in fact, I've just been reading last night through my uh, driving stories document, and so there's a lot more on my mind that I'd like to go through. Uh, but I think I'd like to save the creepy stuff for Nightfall. Now one of the things you guys had said is that I should actually be listening more to the radio because, as we found out quite harshly in the last part, this game does actually have some semblance of story and lore to it. Uh, so actually, uh, we'll do this the safe way and pull over to do this. Wow, look at that. Those rock formations looking almost like a castle against the bare white sky. Let's just pull over and do our thing. Uh, it's so harsh when we do that, the way my character lurches forward. Thing is, I wouldn't have any idea where to look. Oh, there's something. Oh, Ride of the Valkyries, eh? Well, that actually uh, certainly does make me feel cooler about this. You know, I actually am one of those weirdos who will always, like, turn the radio off in, like, American Truck Simulator and long trips in GTA. I don't know, I I've always just felt like it was pointless background noise, but a, a game like this where you're meant to be alone with your thoughts, I can see it actually enhancing that feeling rather than making you feel more distracted. But again, it is also somewhat unnerving, this being basically the only thing we've heard besides the engine in this vast nothing. We figured out last time that this place is definitely a post-apocalyptic setting. Every place we've come to populated by cannibalistic inhabitants, no one else in sight. Well, except for that one UFO that nobody would believe us, but we definitely saw while driving down this desert road one dark night. And, but perhaps we should actually pull over and see if we can get the radio going. Maybe we can find some kind of like talk show or something. Oh uh, wait, how do we switch to FM? I don't remember. There we go. Oh, there's some music on here as well. Now there's desert driving music. I've been assured that all the music in this game is royalty free, so let's just enjoy. We're almost full on gas, got 
plenty of supplies after we what we found on that ship. And even though it was quite a run, quite a scare trying to get back, careful you don't become roadkill. I think we are now in a good spot to cruise for a really long time. At least until the atmosphere strikes us. Until it feels right to get out and have a look around. Oh, and how appropriate this music is. When I hear this, I almost imagine myself driving like in the third person, like I'm seeing us from a distance just zipping through the desert. Out here, it's hard to resist the temptation to just floor it and let yourself fly. I haven't touched the W key in a while. We are just cruising at this point. I wonder if it's possible for me to increase the draw distance so that this doesn't happen quite as egregiously. Huh. Weird how I'm starting to see this whole experience differently depending on what's playing on the radio. I mean, now it feels more like a... Sort of melancholy, but also sort of freeing experience. The world has fallen away, but we're still trucking on. It might be a bad situation on the whole, but maybe it doesn't have to be so bad for us. Maybe... maybe it's better for us, even. I don't think I'm going to be one of those doesn't like the radio in the car people anymore. Wow, that took all of, what, not even 10 minutes for this game to convince me? Oh, I actually really like this song a lot. Watch out, Mr. Rabbit! Why am I swerving for you? You tried to kill me last time I saw you. And the first time I saw you. Really, you're hostile in all respects. Why did I swerve again? You know, I think that's always been what appealed to me the most about, like, post-apocalyptic media. Is that, yeah, there's the action, the excitement, the despair. But there's also a sense of possibility. Of starting new, or even if you're not interested in rebuilding. Uh, of just finally being able to be yourself and be alone with yourself. I and mean, that's the thing, the apocalypse is different things to different people, really. Oh right, this game is, uh... I am not going to be able to understand any of the dialogue. Huh. Well, maybe... hang on, wait. Let me see if there's... let me see if there's subtitles. Oh, hello. We can actually apply LUTs to this. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Oh, these options are incredible. Ooh, we can even do custom radio. That's pretty cool. Oh, something else I also found out. Uh, if you hold left click and right click. <laughs> look at that. We can move them around like a little marionette. Doop -de -doop -de -doop -de -doop -de -doo. Oh, it's like an Italian puppet show. Let's actually adjust our mirror so that we can see out the rear view. I can't believe... I was editing the last part of this, and I couldn't believe that I never got around to doing that. Actually... Just leech through there. There we go. Drove a hundred kilometers without adjusting our mirrors. We are so unsafe. Oh wait, is there something over there? Hang on, bat, get out of my way. Is there something down there that isn't rock? Uh, the road seems to curve to the right, so maybe we'll get a better view. Oh, there- wait, there is something- that looks like a house! Hang on... Oh, I think it is! Wait... Or maybe a church? 
That looks like a graveyard all around it. Oh, great. It's a classic-style haunted house, the kind that you might see in, like, a children's book. Okay, well, we are waiting for night to do this. Ooh, a revolver. Oh, come on. Uh, some of you had said that I should ditch the, uh, the BB rifle for a better weapon as soon as possible. This one looks to be in better shape. Okay, so we'll take that one. Is there any way to remove the rounds that are in here? Uh, R and mouse. R and mouse to open cylinder. Oh, I see. Uh, well, is there any way we can actually take the rounds out? Wow, everything is interactive at all levels. All right, we'll tell you what. We'll take the one that has no ammo because it's prettier. There we are. Huh, I guess items actually have condition then. And I cannot figure out how we actually go about uh, using it, or at least uh, unloading the other ones, so let's just head on down. Uh, if only we had ammo, I was going to say this would be really useful for when we see what's in there, but at least we still have our trusty katana. Oh! Okay, uh, never mind. We should have run you over when we had the chance. Uh, actually, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Maybe we can test out the ugly looking one. Uh, nope, no, 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 F, F, F. Leave me alone. All right, you're not gonna let me have at it. Katana it is. You're actually much bigger than I thought. Hang on, go, 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 go. Uh, I'm afraid to try getting in the car in case you catch up with me. And you're not getting hit nearly as easily as our zombies. Stay dead, please. Well, it looks like the sun is finally starting to set. And I guess it's time to go look at the old dark house off the road and see if they have a phone I can use. Hey, look, if we're going to apply some tropes, we're going to apply them all, okay? Now there's the kind of sight we want. I gotta wonder if there's not, like, new structures that will only appear after a certain amount of uh, distance has been driven. <laughs> look, all these tumbleweeds crossing in front of our path. I don't know if it's actually possible for the battery to run out. I've yet to get a clear answer on that, but... I think we will leave our lights on for added illumination. And get inside before those rabbits get at us again. Oh, look at this. Oh, listen, even the crows have decided to show up to make for a spooky atmosphere. I'm hoping that enough of these headlights diffuse through the front doors and stained glass windows. The only thing that's missing is a long, loud creak as I push that open. Oh, wow, look. The, uh, the attic window is quite conspicuously missing. And my gun is a bluff. Alright, let's see what's here. <laughs> that could not have worked out better if we tried. Yeah, I, I went ahead and restarted the game because uh, it was giving me recording issues. I'm gonna have to get used to the controls again as well. Anybody here? Any light switch, perhaps? Oh, there is definitely going to be somebody here. Why does there have to be a dark spot on this light? It makes no sense. Uh. Well, this place is going back there! Okay! Uh, we ran into trouble much more quickly than expected. All right, you get out here where the light is. Oh, no, don't you go running back off into the dark like that. I hate the way your audio is mixed. Have I mentioned that? Die! 
Okay. With any luck, there was only one resident? A place like this. I don't know if we're gonna find that light switch. There is food. And... You know, like, nice but still quite creepy artwork. I mean, now that we've got this place, we might as well keep it for ourselves, right? What's to stop us from just setting up shop here? I don't like the way these shadows are casting about. Oh, wait, there is a light switch. And that was the lights being on. Oh, no, sorry. I'm, I'm using my own thing. All right. E. Well, at least in here, we're safe from the rabbits. Oh, look, there's a fireplace. No secrets contained within, though, from the look of it. Uh, but there are holes in the walls showing... Ooh, there's a trailer back there. Uh, maybe we can hitch that up to our car to carry some extra loot? Come on, how do I... Why won't you... Oop. <gasps> Hang on, just let me switch, 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 and never saw me come in. I wanted to die anyway. Well, that works for both of us. And of course, there's a basement. A basement where they try to tempt us with bread. Darwin? Darwin, buddy, what are you doing here? Oh, they were keeping you hostage. That's so awful. All right, well, uh, you're coming with me. Don't worry. Uh, and what is this you've got with you? Snap point, closest point. All right, well, we are going to be bringing you with us. Uh, but first, got to find out the rest of what's going on here. Am I to understand that you guys were tunneling in from outside? Oh no, I've made a grave mistake. That's not Darwin, he's a member of the Bone Brigade. Uh, looks like they tried to come through here and lay siege to the zombies. Or whatever you want to call them. Oh, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? If I were to switch to a weapon, I'd have nothing to work with. Hang on. This leads straight to one of the graves in the graveyard. Oh, don't you shake your head at me. I know what I see. Alright, well, look, Darwin might have fallen in with a bad crowd, but this ends here. He's coming with me. You, come on. You come on, we'll take you upstairs, and you can just wait at the dinner table. Maybe have a bite to eat while you wait for me to finish clearing this place. Uh, maybe you can watch my back. Oh, there is a magazine on the table with ten bullets. Uh, we should probably take that when we go. But what about the rest of this floor? You know what, I think at this rate we have lights in here. I think we'll spend the night instead of continuing to drive. So let's uh, pull the car in and turn off its lights. I've still yet to see if they can run out of battery, but I really don't want to risk it, to be honest. Anyway, now that we've made ourselves comfortable, let's uh, continue exploring, shall we? Oh, look at that red glow of the sunrise through that frosted... Frosted? More, more like just wibbly window. And there is tons of food here. And these rest stops are absolutely invaluable. That's the thing. Like The gameplay loop is a very simple one. Just It's really just uh, drive, rest, drive, rest. And maybe fight a few hostiles in the meantime. But it's quite addicting in that way. It's like, I really feel like most gameplay loops in general come down to a system of work, rest, work, rest. Uh, there was another door, though. Ah, bathroom. Perfect. And another rifle, but presumably it's just a BB rifle like the one we have. 
Chocolates. Well, with the sun rising, I suppose I feel a little bit safer heading upstairs. Look, a completely stripped car. Let's go. Oh, I hate this. I hate having to jump up every individual step. That is so annoying. It almost makes me wish I could take some of this artwork with me. Yeah, these lights aren't spooky at all. A hand clasped around the bulb. But it would seem we have reached this house's main feature. Now from these holes in the walls, it must have been crumbling for quite a long time. Are these artworks AI generated? Because those look like ducks until you realize that uh, they're really just in the shape of ducks. Their bill kind of makes up their entire face. This is just the kind of house you would see in all those old movies. Up on the hill, a single lightning flash illuminating it. Some of the windows boarded with others not. And a storeroom that makes for... Oh, it doesn't just make for a good library. It is a library. Quite sparse, but uh, not bad in this setting. Oh, these structures are so cool. Although this one was more dangerous than the other. There you are. <sighs> I should have known. Yeah, this place is absolutely infested with the Bone Brigade. So I'm going to take Darwin. I'm going to take all the stuff we could potentially use and get out of here. There we are. Come with us. <laughs> wow, we can even we can even walk the plank straight out the window. Goodbye, sir. One thing we could also potentially look into is getting a new engine for this vehicle. I mean, literally everything is interchangeable. This is the one that actually gets us entry through the basement, but... Uh, yeah, it, it almost sort of seems like multiple skeletons crawled out of their graves. Uh, conspicuously, nobody in this one. And tried to tunnel their way into the house. Alright, Darwin. We have thoroughly looted this place. Our needs are met. And you are coming with us. <laughs> Imagining like I'm some mom who just like dragged him away from his gang at the street corner. I told you the Bone Brigade are a bad influence. Just like dragging you out here by the ear. All your friends are laughing at you from the basement. Look, don't try and fight me. Don't try and spin around like that. Right, you are getting in the passenger seat right now. Come on. This isn't going to work. Get your legs in. Legs, too. Legs, most importantly, actually. I'm gonna have your legs dangling in front of me the entire time just because you refuse to sit down. You can pout all you want, but this is what's best for you. Now, let's see about that trailer. And you better behave back there. Let's actually tilt this down so that we can see and monitor what he's up to. Yeah, let him know that I'm always watching. How do I do this? There we go. And now we've got a trailer. You could sit there, but for a while longer I still want to keep an eye on you. There's got to be a way to get, like, bodies and stuff to sit up in the seats, right? I mean, this game being what it is. But it is time for us to hit the road once more. As the sun starts to set again. Honestly, desert driving isn't desert driving until the sun starts to rise or set, am I right? You better behave yourself back there. I'd say I would turn this car around, but at this point, no, I absolutely will not be doing that. How creepy would it be if we're in the middle of, like, uh, talking about spooky road stuff and during one of the uh, flashes of light as we pass under a streetlight, we just see that he's sat up for only that second? Let's adjust these mirrors so I can actually see what I'm doing, though. 
Come on, you set below the horizon. There we go. Uh, hey, Darwin, you want to give the radio a try again? Maybe we can find some sort of spooky station. No, but we can at least find a somewhat relaxing one. You know, Darwin, I'm hard on you, but it's only because I love you. You know, these melancholy trips through the night are made at least a little better when you've got a friend, right? Even if that friend doesn't seem to see it that way. And to be honest, I can't blame him. I mean, he had buddies, he had a house all his own. Or at least it was about to be his own, if they could actually free it from the zombies, which it doesn't seem like they were much in the process of doing. But now that we are on the road, blazing a trail through the night, now we can finally get to the meat and potatoes of this video. Which is discussing the sort of intrinsic creepiness about being alone out here. I'm going to turn the volume down just a little bit so I can hear myself think, but... I don't know, I I've just always loved the idea of urban legends on the road. I spoke last time about how it almost has a similar feeling to... Oh no. What's happening? Oh no, is it going to be... We're gonna see it again. Yes, Darwin! Darwin, I finally have living proof! There it is. I knew it! You saw it, right? Oh, please tell me you weren't asleep for that. So that wasn't just a one-off thing. They are here. Coming 2024. And just like that, we're back in. See, I had spoken in the previous part about how urban legends on the road seem almost inevitable, don't they? You spend so much time out here with yourself, seeing things in the darkness that you may or may not have actually seen, your mind playing tricks on you when you're so tired, and, well, even if it really did happen, you'd never believe it yourself, and good luck convincing anyone else. There are just so few elements to capture your attention that they all seem to form around the same few ideas, which has the effect of sort of making them universally relatable. I mean, we've all heard stories of ghost cars, lights coming up in the rear view that never seem to actually catch up, that just seem to dissipate when they finally reach you, of monsters being seen in the tree line as your headlights pass over them. But more recently, I've been reading about things that are, well, quite a bit more believable. I mean, even when you're seemingly alone, you have to remember that there are other people out here. Whether they're fellow drivers, or whether they're set up out in the middle of nowhere permanently, and you're just passing through their world. I read a story for the channel. At the time you're seeing this, I probably haven't uploaded it yet. Uh, but it was posted on Reddit, and there was some girl who was driving down the road and started to get really, really sleepy. And so she pulled off to this motel just in the middle of, like, the back roads, really. And she said that she just got, like, a, a really uncomfortable vibe from the guy at the desk. Like, it, it, the thing that really was off-putting was he asked the question, Are you traveling alone? Which, I, I suppose, like, sort of makes sense when you're renting a room, but also, like, what business is it of yours? Like, I'm getting a room, it's not per person. So she goes and she enters the room and she finds the place is just, like, totally decrepit. Like, you know, stains on the bed and the walls, bugs everywhere. And so after using the bathroom and deciding she's had enough of this place, she decides, I'm just gonna sleep in the back of the car and just make use of the parking space instead of the room. So she falls asleep, but a couple hours later, she's awoken by the sound of a voice. And she looks out into the night, kind of squinting through the windows. And she notices the guy from the desk is talking to somebody on his phone. 
and he walks over and opens the door to the room that she was supposed to be staying in. And he walks in and she says the thing that stuck out to her was the fact that he didn't even turn on the lights. And so after a minute or so of, whoa, whoa, whoa what is this? And I'm going to bring the car around. Sunrise is here. Well, that makes this a little easier, at least. This looks like some kind of radio station. It's at least got an antenna on top. And there's another one of those big ol' rabbits. Alright, maybe we'll continue this story in a little bit. Anyone here? Oh, yes, there is someone here! Okay, it's a good thing. It's a good thing the sun rose when it did. Are you the former, uh, are you the former radio host? Let's climb up. Oh, that sunlight is such a relief. But I do wish the nights lasted longer, like a lot longer. There's a room over here. No! No, there is not. No, there is not. Uh, what kind of place is this? Is it possible for, like, the random generation to put, like, more rooms off of these things and it just didn't? Yeah, you shriek, you rabbitly shriek. Look at you. Now, this is the highest up we've managed to get. And it's very disconcerting. But it doesn't seem like there's actually anything we can do with this. Well, I guess we both learned and did not learn who's still broadcasting? What did you do? Were you trying to get at Darwin? Oh, it's a good thing we left him there in the back seat, although... Oh, he's having a bit of a freak out. I don't blame you, buddy. Oh, it's the second time in this series, once in the intro, when one of these things has managed to run itself over. Uh, but we have made it to the plains. Now, instead of wondering what's out there in the desert, we can wonder what those little glowing eyes are staring at us from the tall grass. Darwin, we are gonna have to do something about you. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, he's like leaning his head out the window trying to gloat at the corpse of the monster that tried to eat him. Let's just drag you out of the road, being roadkill and all. You are so annoying to manipulate. You actually seem like your scale is probably making you a lot larger than I am. Okay, there we go. We had to pull you all the way out. You sit there and think about what you've done while I figure out how we're going to fix this. Okay, that wouldn't be a bad screenshot either. Let's get some sleep, shall we? Oh, that is so cool looking. Hmm, we actually are limited in our sleep. It's not whenever we want. Well, I suppose resuming our trip at dusk is also acceptable. So anyway, there she is in the back of our car. And she sees the guy go across the lot and open the door to what was supposed to be her room. And she sees him go inside, not even turn on the lights. And after a minute or so, he comes out like agitated, like screaming, cursing. And the worst part is she sees him come out with another guy. And it's in that moment that she realizes he hadn't gone in with anyone else. So they're like pacing around the lot frantic and one of them looks over at the car and starts walking towards it. So she, in that moment, like, becomes terrified after being asleep only moments before. So she goes to the floor and starts covering herself with all these clothes that she was using as blankets. And they're, like, walking around, trying all the handles. And they're, like, peeking in through the windows. She can just barely see. Of course, uh, between the night and the tinted windows, they can't see her, but she can see them. And so, after a second, they take a few steps away from the car, and she used that opportunity to crawl to the front, start it up, and peel out of there. 
I don't know, stuff like that. Stuff that can happen basically to anyone. And, and to be in such a vulnerable position where no one would ever know, that's really scary. And it's so intrinsic to roadway horror. And the thing is, I have no idea. Look, this was a story that someone told on Reddit. I have no way of knowing if this is actually true or not. But it's in my head now. And it's going to be in my head every time I stop at a lonely old motel on the side of a desolate road. Actually, there was more to the story. She did give, like, a general area and, like, a couple of possible names. Like, uh, it was something to this effect type of thing. And she said that uh, the police did check it out and it had actually closed down only a few days before. So that begs the question of what was going on here. I do love watching the moon rise in my, uh, in my side view mirror. Although, I haven't touched the gas in a while and it feels like we're just careening through here very, very quickly. If I... I think we're actually moving, like, slightly downhill. Well, not so slightly anymore. Uh, there's something that's oddly exhilarating about just flying through the night. And yet, it's almost silent. Like, something about this makes me practically able to feel the wind. Even though the uh, even though we've got the windshield to protect us, but I feel it in spirit, you know. Oh, why is that a thing? Oh no, is something leaking back there? Oh, that is so dumb. Why are there just rocks in the middle of the road? Hang on, park, 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 park. I said, what was just leaking? What did we lose? Well, we lost a wheel. And a clock, and this oil. Although it is still full. Oh, the trunk must have come open. Yep. Darwin, you are ejected! Oh, it's a good thing you're already undead, or you'd be in pretty bad shape. I don't think there's any hospitals in the apocalypse anymore. Uh, everything was so smooth on the last episode, and everything's going wrong in this one. Somehow we didn't lose the trailer, though. Oh, which one are we missing? Front right? Yeah, you were probably the first one to hit. And, Darwin, if you promise to stay put, you can ride in the trailer, okay? You'll have plenty more room back there. There's plenty of oil for you to drink. I'd actually feel way more comfortable if you'd lie more flat, thank you. And there is another night pretty much gone. Now let's hit the road and keep a close eye on you in our rear view. But yeah, there's just, I don't know, I feel like lately there's been a shift in horror where people are still spooked by ghost stories, but we're seeing more of a focus on more mundane elements such as like carjackings and all kinds of unsavory characters on the roads, you know? I mean, of course, about 10 years ago, that one urban legend got really popular of slowing down to the site of a wreck seeing bodies in the road and wanting to help, but, you know, something just doesn't feel right. And it's only when you make the decision to pull past the wreckage that you see in the background the so-called corpses getting up and more emerging from the tree line. I feel like, really, that's where all urban legends come from. It's a sort of combination of both paranoia and boredom. Because, to once again draw the comparison to nautical myths and legends, I feel like these kind of stories tend to pop up in scenarios where it's sort of a spooky setting, but also you're left alone with your thoughts for long stretches of time. And so, not only are you scaring yourself with the gaps in information that surround you and the unknown, but it's also sort of just your brain entertaining yourself. Like, I do wonder if it doesn't come up with these dangers literally just to keep you on your toes. To keep your mind sharp so that you won't be blindsided by whatever the next thing is. The next real danger, I mean. I see you peeking out that window. And you know, I may not actually be in dire need of anything, but... 
I mean, hey, um, um, nomad, samurai, cowboy, something, I don't even remember. Oh yeah, I think it was part vampire. Whatever, I can't get my lore straight. The point is, it doesn't feel right to leave you guys just walking around. Now what have we got here? Uh, gas, sure, I'll take it. What I really need is uh, better parts for my car. And a meat cube. Sure thing. Oh, I am just starving 24-7. What are you? Ooh, your ammo. Uh, revolutionary problem solver. Well, I'll take that. Uh, hang on, what do we do with our revolver? We dropped it on the floor, right? Let's see if it takes that type of ammo. Well, after those hits, who knows where it ended up. Alright, so then if we were to pick this up and switch it to three and tab and four. Ah, yes, now we can reload. So if we open the cylinder, how do I do that? Ah, R. Excellent, and now we have our fully loaded Red Dead Revolver. And we'll just drop the rest back here for now, only one bullet. Oh, I cannot wait to try this thing out. Now we really are the cowboy part of the cowboy vampire samurai nomad guy. Look, I haven't worked out the licensing yet, just bear with me. You have a chance to stretch your legs, buddy? We're hitting the road yet again, because it seems like our friends have returned. No, not the window. Although I actually wouldn't mind rolling down the window. I mean, this is a, this is a fairly nice countryside. And we're about to make it just a little bit nicer. Yeah, no, you better run. <laughs> oh, he heard me and he got off the road. They do seem to have at least that level of self-awareness, although they can't seem to avoid getting hit by a parked car. I mean, that sounds like a joke, but it's happened twice. Oh, wait! No, 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 don't sleep the whole night away. Wake up. I want to go back to my musings on creepy roadway phenomenon. And now, last night I talked about how, for a lot of people these days, it's probably not the cryptids or paranormal aspect of road driving that would tickle the creepy part of their brain. Uh, but really, the more mundane horrors, the kidnappers and robbers and worse. The approaching headlights or the wreck on the road is more what they fear. But I also feel like the trance-like state that it puts you into, the often drowsy state, well, that also opens itself up not just to paranormal or mundane horror, but also to just outright bizarre happenings. I distinctly remember this one story that I read once where this guy was driving down the road. They said I-85 just near the exit to the Kia plant. And they said they came upon what looked like two small dogs in the road. And that one of them looked like it might be injured and the other one was trying to help. So he felt bad and slowed the car down, swung around to try and help. And as soon as he did, he saw that they were nowhere to be found. So he swings the car back around in his original direction and drives a little way. And comes upon in his headlights just a little pug standing, staring him down in the middle of the street. So he stops and slows down. And as he looks around, he realizes there's what he describes as little toy dogs. Just these little tiny breeds all just coming out of the trees and surrounding the car, including the two that he saw on the road. And at that point he had enough and just kind of drove out, and they didn't do anything, but it, it's one of those things that it's just, what do you even make of that? I feel like it's stuff like that that, you know, none of us know what we'd do in a situation like this, and we would probably be really freaked out, but we also get so bored when we're driving that we, kind of hope for stuff like that to happen, which is a, a really interesting conflict when it comes to Legends, isn't it? These things that are stories of terror, situations we never want to find ourselves in, and yet we sort of do just to spice it up. 
Not to mention the stories of, like, the places you might encounter. There's the tale of Monkey Mountain, the legendary uh, redneck town in the mountains where the police don't even go, where the residents will leave nails in the street and chase you out if you drive up there. I read a story a while back of passing by a gas station that was completely dark, but as they drove past, they could see, like, people pressed against the glass from the inside watching them go by. Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like that's also another element of road stories. Instead of staying and engaging with whatever creepiness you're seeing, you tend to pass it right on by. It, it tends to be like a blink and you'll miss it type of thing that leaves you wondering if you really did even see anything at all. You don't have time to contextualize what it was. And in the end, it leaves you with far more questions. It, it's a sort of setting where you have that out of being able to leave so many answered questions because, well, I mean, unless you stop for it, you won't derive anything other than those two seconds of visuals. I really wish there was just a night all the time setting in this game. How cool would that be for a random event in this game, huh? You're driving down the road at night and just for a split second, in your headlights, you catch what looks like somebody standing on the side of the road. And by the time you slam your brakes and swerve around, they're just gone. Speaking of the side of the road, this is the first time I've seen a vehicle just spawn out in the road like this. Totally stripped bare, but this is a truck with a bed. Huh, so we could actually tow a vehicle if we wanted, that's cool. What you're doing by this bus stop is anyone's guess. Doesn't look like there's anything to loot. Aside from, what are these, cigarettes? Eh, they're bad for you. I don't think I'll be taking those. Oh, just listen to those chirping birds, huh? Darwin, how you holding up? Buddy! Uh, Darwin, you don't need to take your head off for this. Oh, what happened to you? Oh, your skeleton's all discombobulated. Is that your pelvis up where your neck should be? Darwin, I don't know what kind of phase this is, but I don't like it. Whatever, I should probably take this opportunity to check, like, coolant and oil, right? Uh, okay, so our oil cap is open, so that's probably what was leaking before. We could use more of that, and coolant is about half. Well, we'll be fine for a while longer. I suppose we'll just get a moving again. It's really crazy how, like, beautiful the scenery can look at times. And how the, the mood just immediately changes when it gets dark out. And I really do enjoy that back and forth. Uh, actually, now would be a pretty good time to mess with those LUT settings, right? So if we go down here, uh, let's try C64 color palette. Uh, I wonder if we can actually import LUTs from like Photoshop or something. Can we do that? I gotta find out where these things are stored. And sepia tone. Ah, oh, now I feel like I'm ready to run from a twister. Are those in this game? I and mean, we've seen those like big dust clouds. Yeah! Ow! Oh god! Oh, God, that actually... Oh, I smeared blood all over the windshield. Ah, uh, I'm having so much more trouble with the driving in this part than the previous. Uh, okay, you're still attached. Darwin, you held on. That's good. I think you're glitched. Actually, really only the bumper in the hood came off. We came out none the worse for wear. Where the... Oh, well, never mind. The engine flew out. But that's okay. Things don't break in this game. You can just put it back in and it's all good. Let's put you on there, and you on there. Good as new! Uh, I mean, I'm not. How do we even... how do we even know? How do I see... how do I see my stats again? 
absolutely horrific. I, I wonder if I have a sponge or something. Can I maybe, like, clean it off? You know, just get a little squeegee and wipe it down? Oh man, that, that was actually like surprisingly visceral. I could practically feel the blood gushing out of my nose. I don't think I have a sponge. I just have this gold bar. Or wait, is that a sponge? Hmm. Maybe I can... Do I need water, maybe? I actually was reading about this, and basically the way it used to work was it, that it meant the next crash you would die. So, definitely want to try and avert that, but it just doesn't seem to be working the way it's supposed to. Alright, so let's pull out of here. Again, knowing that if we get into another major collision, we die. Uh, and I guess we'll just stop at the next place and see if maybe there's another sponge. Maybe this one is considered worn out. And I did also find out in the process that we can apparently use a wire brush to eliminate rust. So, if we find one of those, we'll also give that a try. I'm seeing another haunted house. This time it's not even a phone I'm looking for, it's a sponge. Oh, don't you try and end my run, Rock. I, I do not understand why these things just spawn on the road like that. But, one way or another, we will find something. Oh, maybe... maybe this time we can try using the graves to sneak in. I don't know if it does that every time, but... You know, the terrain is also doing some interesting new things up ahead. I will always hate just pulling up in the grass like this. Oh, and we're starving and thirsty. Hunger seems to go down so quickly. It seems night is coming to meet me instead. All right, you know the drill. Find the lights as quickly as possible. And then see about uh, seeing about finding a better entrance. Well, at least there's no coffin here. But we should be ready to test out our new gun. Oh, I see the artwork changes as well. And not unlike myself, is this what becomes of each lone wanderer who comes upon this place? God, that is creepy. Uh, there's an image I'd never even considered before. A chair sitting on the stairs. And we can pick you up. Let's get you up here and leave you where you belong. Lights on. Still not seeing anyone, but take that for what it's worth. Hmm. I swear I just faintly heard something. Yep! All right, bud, and boop! And one headshot is all it takes. Uh, the reason we never did find the old attic is because there isn't an attic. This is just, this is just an opening that goes all the way up. Uh, a couple more liters of gas, that's useful. That just jump scared the crap out of me. Uh, and oil, so we can make use of that. All I care about right now is a sponge. Uh, funny the highly specific loot items you start looking for in really granular games like this. Uh, games with a lot of elements for the player to consider. Yep. Uh, there's a sponge right there. Okay, so if we take you... Uh, can we bring this to the car? Actually, maybe we should spend the night in the place. Do this in the morning. I kind of like that idea. I always have wanted to spend the night in a haunted house. I just never thought it would be under such... 
specific circumstances. But let's just close all of this. Sleep in the bed. And have a nice rest. Ah, oh, that outer view of the house, the stained glass, the only thing we can see in the darkness. And sleeping until afternoon, wow. Now that we have new sponge, let's see, ah, uh, there, now we're getting somewhere. There we go! Okay, so the other sponge, I guess, was worn out. Uh, maybe I wasn't able to recognize it because they come in, like, different colors or something? Okay, well, that means that uh, this can be put here, and you are getting left here. Darwin, I don't know what it is about this new pose, but it seems to make you incredibly resilient to crashes. You were in the cabin and you got flung out before. And now I don't know what's going on, but it seems to be working. If we do have a look in the graveyard... Ah, oh, we do have a tunnel entrance. Uh, this is actually really cool and detailed for just, like, randomly generated highway scenery. Uh, and we've got the gold room down here. I like how the game, like, gives you the opportunity to build your riches. Uh, but now, now that I know that we have the ability to wear away the rust, I really want to find one of these uh, wire brushes. Well, can't say it's been a pleasure, but we did at least learn a lot from this whole thing thing. Oh uh, god, that moment of like actual like visceral brutality when I realized that was my blood all over the cabin. Right. But if we swing around, I don't know if I've seen like dirt hills like this before. Darwin, you still holding up back there? That was kind of a rough swing. Uh, I see, it's a trap laid by the uh, by the tumbleweeds. Avoid the rocks? Yeah. I, I am wondering if we're not going to start seeing more different types of terrain generation as we go. I thought we had made it like at least 20% through the game. As it turns out, we're nowhere close. Every time one of these trees shows up to the side, I think it's like some kind of great deer or elk or something. It just looks like two giant sets of antlers sticking up over the grass and a hulking torso in the middle. You know, if you strip away the specifics of the situation we just found ourselves in, we were out driving, got into an accident, realized we were living on borrowed time, and so we had to creep into the old abandoned house that everyone knows to be haunted and fight through the terrors inside, hoping to find an artifact that could save our soul. I guess these plots do tend to play out naturally one way or another, no matter how you look at it. This sort of reminds me of driving through Ohio on the way to Chicago one time to visit my cousin. You know, there are a lot of anxieties and fears in the world, but uh, one that we can definitely put to bed is the idea that we're ever going to run out of corn, because believe me, we are never ever going to run out of corn. Now that we're encountering more hills, slowing down is becoming something of a skill. Gotta be able to keep mostly straight while still keeping myself on the road. Oh, but look, only what we see in the streetlights remains green while the sun's doing leaves the rolling hills around us shrouded in red. It's like almost apocalyptic imagery with like a bubble of green surrounding us. That is so cool. Keep straight, 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 keep straight. Oh, I can't see what's in the grass. Uh. Yeah, I haven't been investigating much off to the sides because I'm so paranoid after what happened last time I went far off-road. But, you know, this this like weird change of scenery sort of reminds me of another element that often comes up in driving stories. And it's something that's just intrinsic 
in nature to driving at night. Which is just how different a place looks by night. I mean, so many stories of seeing something in the dark that either turns out to be something entirely different when visited during the day, or just can't be found again at all. I mean, I remember reading a story once a long time ago of somebody driving down, like, a familiar road at night and seeing all dark, like, no lights on in the windows or anything, like what looked to be an abandoned church or something off to the side of this road that they'd never seen before. And in the morning, they couldn't find anything there but an open field, leaving them wonder if they really saw anything at all, just what it was that was occupying that space. You still chilling back there, Darwin? <laughs> One good thing about having this trailer here is that when those lights pass through, I'm thinking about what I'll see in the trailer and not what I'll see staring at me from the seat behind. And that's part of what makes driving so creepy and comfy is it's sort of an imperfect safety bubble. I mean, you... We're doing this again. We know that we're safe here. We know that we're contained in this vehicle and yet... <laughs> And yet, it's incomplete. There's gaps behind us. We're often sitting in the dark. We feel that presence from the seat behind us. Or in some cases, coming up the road in the air. At this point, it's just kind of something you come to expect, having to slam the brakes, put it in park, and just wait for your lights to come back to you. I've been playing so much Voices of the Void that at this point I feel a compulsion to press 4 and pull out my camera. Yeah, but unlike there, there's really no one to send it to in this instance. You know, I don't know what else this game has in the way of events. I mean, we've only the only event we've seen, as far as I know, is the UFO. But I can't help but take inspiration from another legend I read about as a kid. There's this one long stretch of highway in the desert, and allegedly, if you find yourself the only one there at night or at dusk, you'll see in the way distance in your rear view a pair of headlights approaching, and it'll take a long time for it to get to you, and you'll just see it creeping up over time. Once it finally does, you'll see that it's like this black old hot rod, and the thing will suddenly speed up and hit you right on the bumper. And so you'll hit the gas, speed up, try to get away from it, but no matter how fast you go, no matter what kind of maneuvering you do, well, it's just hundreds of miles of this one stretch. You have nowhere to go, and it's always right on you. And some people say that, like, they see flames through the windshield of the car. Like, there couldn't possibly be a driver inside or coming out of the exhaust, maybe. Steam rising up from the slightly lowered windows. Some even say that uh, dogs will start running on the side of the road. These, like, big hounds with red eyes. And they'll follow you literally for, like, one, two hundred miles. And then, as soon as you reach a certain point, like Ichabod Crane's bridge, they just pull back, and just like that, you're suddenly alone in the night. And, well, <laughs> we have no idea what happens to the people who don't keep their foot on the gas the entire time, because they never live to tell about it. Now, if I were to ever find myself in such a situation, I'd be looking back at the headlights on the road behind me and wonder if this is going to be that car. Hang on, is there something up ahead? Oh no, I thought it was a billboard, but it was just grass being very, very strange. And I feel like, uh, I feel like stuff off to the side of the road is becoming fewer and farther between. You know, I have always heard that uh, the devil likes a good chase. 
doesn't like easy prey. He wants the challenge. And so I've always wondered if that's not what it's supposed to be, you know? I mean, why stop it, ghosts and cryptids and aliens? Why can't there be a demonic presence on the roadways as well? I mean, if they like to play with their food and put you in impossible situations, what better place than somewhere where you can't do anything but keep going forward? It's a really weird feeling when the tall grass gives way to just the wide open flat plains. I don't know, somehow that's even creepier than the wide expanse of the deserts, because with that you expect to see nothing but sand and rocks, but here, it almost doesn't compute that a place could be so green and yet so desolate. And the nuclear white of the sky definitely doesn't help. Uh, driving down the road at night may be dreamlike, but this just doesn't feel like something that can exist. It's not even relatable. You know, as we plow across this endless expanse, allow me to entertain myself with a little bit of creative writing and maybe expand a little bit on the Legend of the Devil Car. So say you find yourself in that situation on a road trip when you're young. The thing comes to your bumper after chasing you for miles and trying to maintain like your 150 miles an hour as you tear through the desert trying to get away from this thing is the most terrifying experience of your life. Not only that, but it's the most relief you've ever felt when it finally peels off, and you're able to drive off into the morning light and get to the nearest town, where of course nobody believes you, you still tell that story to anyone who will listen to the rest of your life. And then, you know, time passes, you have kids, you get old, and you, it's just that time you're lying in your deathbed in the hospital, and right as you're saying your goodbyes after living a full life, the last thing you see is you glance out the window and you see that car waiting at the hospital's gate. Imagine what you'd feel in that moment, that thing that's become such a big part of your life, such a core memory, but after all these decades, even you've begun to doubt your own story. And I feel like that's a fear you would inevitably have once you've thought about it enough, right? I mean, if you come to the conclusion that you really were chased by the devil himself, well then you'd know that he really doesn't like to be handed his hat. I'm not just gonna let that go. I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to amuse myself right now. Coming up with stories and checking what's off to the side. We could take a bike for ourselves. Yep. But I'm kind of invested in the vehicle that's been with us through so much right now. I have yet to see a bad guy spawn here, but they always could. Uh, yep. Thank you, Meat Cube. I was very, very hungry. Now, I've tried in the past to apply paint to these things. And I think the reason it hasn't really worked is because maybe it doesn't work on things that are, like, things that are rusted. So I'm going to take this with me. Yeah, it doesn't do anything there. I'm going to take this with me and we'll see about getting this thing clean. That's our goal for this video, is fixing up this car as much as we can. Huh, I guess we lost the glove box door at some point. Well, that sucks. But I'm going to keep my eye out for another gas station. Wait, what are you? Oh, a big ol' cargo or tanker truck? Hang on, that's interesting. I haven't seen one of these. At least I don't think so. What are you hauling? Oh, well, you don't have anything in your tank, but you can actually store stuff. Oh, this is so cool, sitting from so much higher up. Hmm. I did actually play a little bit of the multiplayer beta with my friend Sarah, and it was such a funny time. Like, if this thing is glitchy now, it's a hundred times more glitchy in multiplayer, but it's so enjoyable. But you can, in fact, put together a fleet of cars. Whoa! Oh, the rabbits are starting to teleport in now. That's becoming a huge problem. And again, they seem to... It's weird. They want my blood. They want Darwin's bone marrow. 
but they won't go near a vehicle even if it's not moving. Well, actually, they won't go near a vehicle if I'm in it, but they will assault it if just Darwin is there. So I guess they just like to pick the easy targets. Well, it seems we're moving more into a sort of deserty terrain again. And, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This game needs forests. It's such a big part of night driving and it's just missing from the game. I know one of you said in the comments for the previous video that they were in the game at some point, but they were removed due to bad performance. Figure it out. Figure out a way to optimize it. Special kind of eeriness when you're aware of the sun setting, isn't there? I mean, I guess it's two different feelings when night just kind of creeps up on you when you snap out of your road days and see that night has fallen. And when you actually watch the sun go down and you know that just in a moment you'll be in that sort of situation again. That looks like a farmhouse or something. Oh, that is so creepy. Well, we've already been in a couple of haunted mansions. What kind of horror protagonist would we be if we didn't go to check it out? Oh, this place is all, like, dirty and overgrown with moss and grass. All the windows and doors left wide open and... A well toward the front of the property. Is there someone there? I hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my god. Oh, look at you. We can see our headlights illuminating you inside the window. But there's something down there. I'm not jumping down there until I've saved. It looks like a physics object, though. Tell you what, can we save ourselves the bullet? Indeed we can. Oh, but there's another. Oh, you noticed me. Tell you what, let's not even take the risk. And I can't tell if it's just bad mic quality or what, but something about the way your voice is mixed... I actually leave it exactly the way it is, because... All that makes me think is just how unnatural it seems for that to be coming out of a human throat. What is that beside you? Can't even tell. But I see the inhabitants of this place have the same propensity for creepy images. There's the garage, another trailer with no wheels. Wait, was there a room back here? Of course there was, and another sponge. Uh, we'll have to take that since they are literally health with the way these mechanics present. One thing that is kind of interesting about this game is how the mechanics are so weird and specific, Doug, that uh, it results in some pretty unique gameplay sometimes. Uh, some water for the coolant container, we'll take that. Wait, but there must be a way upstairs, right? Oh my god, that's... Uh, uh, tumbleweed jump scare yet again. But that was such a malicious attempt at entrance. Don't tell me that it wasn't. Tell you what, if we can reach you... Oh, careful not to drop it on ourselves. Boom. Thunk. Okay, maybe we can stack stuff and use this fridge to get up. It's actually really fortunate that it landed the way it did. Uh, let's have a look around for more things. Uh, maybe we can even use maybe we can even use the car itself. Uh, this game is just so atmospheric. I, I love headlights as a source of illumination. They're so versatile, not only when you're sitting in the seat itself, uh, but also when it's just kind of idling in a field. Oh, look, the uh, power lines even connect to these roadside horrors. 
Uh, might be a little bit difficult to get in here with that trailer there. And even harder to see what we're doing. So that's just, oop, right there. And let's jump up on you, and up on you, and up on you. And that gets us this far, but not quite where we wanted to be. Can we jump over to here? We can. But there's no window. Hmm. Conundrum. Uh, we're so close. We're so close. Oh, we actually did manage to crawl in. <laughs> but there's nothing up here but a toilet and a meat cube. And I'm too hungry to care where that meat cube came from, honestly. At this rate, we're probably going to end up drinking the water that's in the coolant container. Oh no, I accidentally fell in the well. I accidentally fell in the well. Look at all this stuff piled up. Come on, come on, you can do it. Yes. I think it does have like a slight pull-up mechanic like Voices of the Void. Wow, there is a ton of stuff down there. I have no idea how you're meant to get at it. Uh, we do have a 40 liter container of alcohol. Uh, which isn't particularly useful to me, but, you know, it's there for those who want it. Well, there's not much reason to stick around. All I really want at this point is that wire brush. So let's once more ride off into the sunset. I keep getting reminded by my shadow that we're wearing this awesome cowboy hat. Which I feel in an apocalyptic wasteland does give me some semblance of authority. I mean, I suppose it does if there's no one around to question it, right? Oh, wait, whoa, wait, whoa, wait. I just realized, since we can use items while we're in here... Uh, yeah, we can just straight up do drive-bys. That is so funny. Not that there's much utility in that, but uh, maybe we go rabbit hunting at some point? Is there something out there, actually? I am so paranoid about going off-road. I mean, anytime we do that, there's always a possibility that we'll never find our way back. Especially during the day when the streetlights aren't illuminated. And, I mean, look, the fact that we've already lost sight of that thing shows that objects in the distance are usually quite a bit farther than they appear. But we'll just have to trust this. I'd really like to get this vehicle looking nice. Yep, there's those rocks appearing in front of it. That is one of the most insidious things in this game. How your line of sight can become obstructed. These ramps are so tempting. And I'll tell you what else is tempting using our revolver. I heard you. You can't pretend you're not here. I you. Oh, I need you too, sir. Look at that one ominously rolling soccer ball. You know, the way these uh, the way these things work, it's actually like disturbingly realistic how like how how much the burst actually is felt in your hand, how they just kind of like fall over. Look, we can even see the bullet impact in the back of your head. Wow. Well, let's get a lootin'. Oh, hello! Uh, we found even more ammo and a fully loaded AK. And we've got another magazine in the car as well. Well, we're doing okay for ourselves right now. Let's just throw that in the back for when we might need it at a later time. I do wonder what kind of threat exists in this game that could warrant such a weapon. I haven't really been wanting for weapons so far. God, that is so creepy the way you're just leaning in the window like that. The really dumb thing is I'm pretty sure I've probably seen like a million wire brushes up until this point. But I just haven't known that that was like a thing you could do. 
So now, of course, it's that Project Zomboid thing where you can never find the specific thing you're looking for. But let's uh, hit the road again. There's something here. <laughs> I always get freaked out by the weird physics quirks of just loading in, but it is another gas station, just like the one where we first encountered one of these vampire zombie things. So maybe it's exactly what we're looking for. I intend to. Allow me to cure that for you. More revolver ammo, I'll certainly take that. Uh, in fact, I do need it. So if I switch to this and open the chambers, I can go boop, 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 boop. And we're good to go once more. It's always right before you get in the car that you look out at the open road ahead of you and you just wonder what it is you're gonna stumble upon next. I mean, driving on the road is like life, isn't it? It's just moving forward in a series of experiences and anticipation of experiences along the way. You just hope that the next one is going to be spooky so it makes for some good content. The cool thing I think about road horror is that it's essentially timeless. I mean, even if you go back as far as, like, decades ago, a lot of the stories you'd tell are exactly the same. The son almost blinded me to run over that rabbit. But a lot of these stories probably existed, like, even as far back as, like, the stagecoach days. Because it all works more or less the same way, even if the technology is different. However, now we are starting to get into an age where the technology is just different enough where we get uh, some nice new content updates to the genre. I remember reading one story on X or Reddit or something where for some reason, like, this guy's GPS just kept trying to kill him and his girlfriend. I mean, calculated a route in the middle of this, like, dark area in an unfamiliar place that they basically found out would have led them straight through a house and into a lake. I mean, that's not just, like, updating maps or having the wrong information or something like that. That is drawing a road where there isn't one, which is really a bizarre thing to have happen. Maybe I should slow it down a bit. When I get too invested in these what-ifs and thoughts, uh, I find I just hold down the W key for way too long. I'm seeing some really weird lights on the horizon. Actually, wait, is that the streetlights popping into view? Why are they giving off that, like, weird greenish glow? I mean, they're, they're following the curve of the road. Oh, that is bizarre. I don't know if I've seen that before. But yeah, as I was saying, I really do feel like GPS is the best thing to happen to road horror in a long time. Because it just introduces so many possibilities. I mean, the idea of the GPS leading you astray, this thing that you're supposed to trust to navigate you. But really, if you're absent-minded or don't know the way, it can take you anywhere. And you'd be none the wiser until it's too late. Of course, we don't have that issue here because this is just one long road that stretches off into nothing. But just imagine ending up somewhere that's totally unfamiliar, somewhere really unfriendly, and all because you were basically looking at your shoes the whole time. It's like ending up in a bad neighborhood, only so much worse because you weren't the one controlling your, where you were going. Don't you try to do this to me, Road Rock. Last thing I need is breaking down in the middle of the night.
There's this one video that I, I really, really like for how minimal it is. It's a Local 58 video called You Are On The Fastest Available Route. And it is so cool. It's almost from the perspective of like a 90s or 2000s era dash cam. Really, glitching technology can be creepy at the best of times, but it, it's so much worse when it's actually responsible for your physical well-being. And speaking of physical well-being, we're about to risk it by checking out this little gas station right here. Wow, that is a bright red pump. All the ones we've encountered so far have been, like, rusted. Does that mean that this could actually work? Why was I able to just get right out? Did I just climb out through the window or something? I don't know if my window is open, but that was really weird. Uh, no, it's not interactive. It's just colorful. Wire brush, anyone? Another can of paint. We'll need that. Uh, another gold bar, amongst other things that are really not gold bars. And a covered well. Although, there is a cactus sticking out of it, so I don't know if we'll actually be able to get at its contents. None. Uh, how does this happen? Yeah, just lift this fridge with one arm. Can't do the same with the trailer, of course. Uh, yep. Okay, so there's food inside. Get you out of the way. Oh wow, it actually sheared the arms off the cactus. Uh, it's deep, but not necessarily useful. What is this? Put on. Oh, it's a cap. Okay, well, I've already got a pretty cool cap. So we'll just bring this this way. When I've just finished clearing a creepy location and I'm just blinded by my own headlights as I approach the vehicle... I just expect to see someone walk across them, a shadowy silhouette that I didn't know I was looking right at the entire time. Uh, is that all? I think that's probably about it. Just gotta check this canister beside here. Gas, take it. Thank you. Just a short stop. Let's blow this popsicle stand. I feel this way in real life, too. There's a real sense of being watched when you have to get out of a car at night, go check out a location with no one there. I feel like there's just a fear whenever you're made to stop by something unexpected that it's some kind of trap, you know? That robbers really do come up with ways to stop cars and rob them. I mean, I've seen some dash cam videos where that appears to be the case, but of course, those who stick around to find out, well, I imagine their stuff never releases. But the glow of the morning sun welcomes us, and we are once again back into finding that one specific item mode. You know, speaking of things being used as bait, I actually, in this entire video, haven't seen any, like, really distant structures. We've had a couple of things just off the road, but in the last part I was seeing, like, ships and all kinds of things way out in the middle of nowhere. So it's really kind of disconcerting that I haven't seen them in another, like, three and a half, four hours of playing. Like, it was trying to lure me off last time. And it almost succeeded.
Actually, wait, I just had an idea. Can we perhaps use the shovel to dig out those things that I had previously thought was just like glitched into the ground? Hello, revolver. Um, maybe. Oh, it looks like it is actually. Oh! Huh, I had been wondering about that. I wonder if this would fit my car. There we are. Well, that took some doing, but we got it. Yeah, come on, you. Oh, you're so heavy. Like some kind of engine block. Okay, so, engine swap for dummies. First, open the hood. Then, simply rip out the engine with your bare hands, spilling stuff all over the place, because for some reason that cap is always open. Uh, grab you, sir. And lift you up and over. And insert... There we go. I have no idea if that's actually any different, because I don't know anything about cars. And we'll just take that old oil and see if we can't pour one into the other. We absolutely can pour the contents of one engine out into another engine. Why not? Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, feels like we're moving up in the world. Wow, it doesn't even fit under the hood. Uh, it, it's a modification, you know? Just imagine we've cut the port. And we'll just leave you right here. You've got us very far. But uh, now we'll see how this thing performs. I mean, this is all about upgrading our car, right? We can also grab some additional oil from right here. I'm going to be real annoyed if it turns out that this thing is actually, like, lower performance than the other one. I wish we could see some kind of stats. Maybe we can? All right, let's see what she can do. Oh, wow, that took off. Oh, this feels so much better. Oh, it's got a bit of a quieter sound as well. Ah, oh, Darwin, you feeling this? We are riding in style now. Oh, this thing's gonna get me killed. I'm gonna slam into so many poles. It's like the Project Zomboid paradox, you know? Where a better car is actually worse. So many people take Sunday Driver, which is supposed to be a negative trait, specifically because it will force them to slow down and not kill themselves. But I still can't help but feel like we've moved on up in the world. Look at how quickly we're able to hold down that 160. Well, once again, the, uh, the rock behind the tree shows up to inform us of why we shouldn't do that. Darwin, you still there? Please don't fly out. If I if we hit a bump, I'll never notice you missing. And guys, I swear, if he flies out, if we get to our stop and find him missing, I will turn this car around and probe the highway looking for him. This thing almost has like too much kick for me. You know, it's also a bit of a surprising upgrade for something that we literally dug out of the sand at a bus stop on the side of the road. But I suppose that's the logic of a game like this. It's all about... It's all about little stories within a big story, you know? Which I do think is the right way to do, like a long-form game like this. It's all about little objectives and big objectives. If you don't have small steps along the way, you sort of lose interest in the big one. And if you don't have a big one, the little ones don't seem so important. I mean, I would love to play a bunch if it weren't for copyright, but why does it seem like every driving song is also like a desert song? I mean, a horse with no name, ghost riders in the sky. Literally everything Johnny Cash has ever done or covered is a driving song in my eyes. 
here's another one of those towers of disappointment that we can't actually climb into. You know what this game needs? It needs the hook from Voices of the Void so that we can climb up and over. Hang on. Is this something off to the side? Yes. Another little gas station. Perfect for when you're looking for auto care things. There we are. Missing our target. I always. It, it's weird because I always underestimate. Oh, why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? Are you running low on coolant? No, I mean, the cap is open. But you're not running low. Oh. Yeah, why are all these caps open? I definitely did not leave them that way. Why are you doing this? Anyways, what I was gonna say, we'll address this in a bit, is that it, I always forget how fast I'm going simply because I'm not used to it being this quiet at those speeds. Uh, nothing here. Why am I even looking in these? These are just traps waiting for me to fall in. Gas. Wire brush, please. My kingdom for a wire brush. I should take one of these spray bottles as well. Well, that was an audio-visual experience that no one's ever had before. Hitting a crate with a katana and suddenly being blinded by an explosion, revealing two chihuahuas in the midst. Darwin, you are still all discombobulated. And oddly enough, it's probably the only thing keeping you from flying out when we hit bumps. But other than that, I don't see anything of particular use right here. I mean, we can take the gas, but we're actually pretty full on that. Hang on, I wonder... This is one in a million, but... Wow. Not only does it work, but we get to see a chemical breakdown of RP. Honestly, imagine going back in time to, like, the 80s, you know, finding one of those nerds at the arcade, and just informing them that this is the future of gaming. That, yes, things really will get this advanced. Uh, a genie lamp? Huh, I was really kind of hope- Uh, wow, it actually does do an animation. Or at least like a particle effect. Ooh! Hang on, this is a weird little artifact we've just found. I really did not like those shadows just, like, approaching. I honestly thought I was going to look up and see that, like, Robin Williams uh, Aladdin genie. Or, honestly, knowing this game, something far worse. All right, well, here you go. Here's some bling, Darwin. I found it in the dirt behind this bus stop. I don't know what it does, but maybe something. And we just tear out of here before that genie shows up. Or actually, I feel like getting the genie is the point of this, but also it never it never works out well for the wishies. Wow, we gained speed quickly.
Yeah, I'm probably gonna end this soon. We didn't exactly find what we were looking for. I'm still on the hunt for that wire brush. But we found something better. Our car certainly did improve quite a bit, not just cosmetically. We found a friend. We found some new and honestly really creepy and cool new houses. And other collectibles off to the side of the road. And it makes me wonder just what all there is to encounter in the full 5,000 kilometer journey. I mean, this would only be like 260 something, right? But as we make our way through this night, I suppose there's still time to get into the creepy side of things a little bit more. Alright, come on. 2664, 2665, and 2666. There it was. That tumbleweed just exploded spontaneously. Now, weird things happen on the road. Kind of strange, though, how we've gotten the alien event three times, and I don't think there's been anything else. At least nothing that I was able to recognize. But, I mean, if some of the legends we've been through throughout this is any indication, there's so much that could happen to us on the road. In my search, I suppose I'm sort of obligated. Hello, look at that little car. I imagine it's from you that we see the flames. Yeah, just keep crawling out the window like that. Imagine we see the flames coming from you. Your headlights turn on as we pass, and you suddenly start following us, even though we saw no one in the driver's seat as we arrived. I feel like so many legends arise from just the what-ifs when somebody sees something that isn't even creepy. They just think about what if something creepy happened. A whole lot of stuff, including a gas can full of blood. And a coffin, just like that first place. Hmm, seems like you have much the same engine as what I did. Uh, which means my car is worth just as much. Turn on. Okay, it's turned on. What do I do with a keyboard? Now, does that have to be hooked up to like a monitor or something? Alright, well, we've got a replacement part now. And quite frustratingly, still no wire brush. But I cannot miss this opportunity to ride through the night. I mean, that's the best part of this game. Actually, I, I talked about the potential for horror in the idea of the GPS leading you astray. And that's scary for its own reasons, but let's not forget the alternative. Prior to GPS, it was entirely on you for navigation, and nothing to get you out of that jam. And getting lost was entirely possible all on your own, and in fact more likely back then. One genre of story that I feel like isn't talked about as much as like phantom hitchhikers or ghost cars is the idea of just ending up in a situation like this, people who talk about being on a familiar road, driving back home from like a party or like an aunt's house or something, and they just, it feels like it's gone on for entirely too long. They just drive for what feels like hours and hours, seeing sights they've never seen before, even though they should be on a familiar road, and then they finally, all at once, things just go back to normal, and they finally hit that turn that they've been expecting and they get home and collapse into bed and they just end up with no explanation for what happened and whether it's real or psychological it's just like a, a weird quirk almost like a weird reality glitch that you just find yourself going through and as with all things on the road no one else around to vindicate you
Nope, road change. That means biome change imminent. What am I doing? Racing forward as if it matters. This engine is going to be the death of me, I swear. Is that another farmhouse in the distance? And it'd be a nice change to stop at one for the day and sleep until night, right? And provided we can clear out the inhabitants in time. I swear this engine's gonna be the death of me. But in an endless expanse like this, well, anything looks like an oasis, doesn't it? You know, when it's green all around, let's just slow it down a bit because there will be surprise rocks. And the last thing I want is to lose this engine. Wow, we can actually... Mm, if we wanted, we could very well just fling ourselves out the window at 160 kilometers an hour, I suppose it is. Not like I was ever good with uh, speeds anyway. By eye. Yep. Crawling out. I love how the tall grass just surrounds this structure in particular. Look at you, moving just out of view as soon as I peek you through the grass. Yeah, you get right on that as soon as you get in shape, buddy. What is going on in here? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we found the wire brush. I don't like the games you're playing, but I'm afraid to round the corner. I'm just trying to rip off your face and use it as my own. Alternative thought. Oh, this place is so decrepit. What is all of this supposed to be? Is this all rock that's just like generated inside the place? Oh, completely bisected this car, went right through it. And this place housing mostly apocalyptic scenery. Wow, wait, let's get a closer look at that one. All these slain people lying beneath the God's return, I suppose. All right, let's see if that is indeed the uh, the fabled wire brush. Well, what's funny is that I'm pretty sure I spent a long time looking at one at the start of this session, and I just left it, dismissed it as useless. Uh, tab to equip. And let's see what we can do right after we shut this thing down. Oh, I think it's actually... It's working! It does work! Wow! Okay, well, we have got stuff to do yet. I was just about to end the session, really. Okay, so this is an entirely bare exterior. That's what that looks like. Uh, any more parts to do? Won't do the bumpers, we'll just find some replacement bumpers. And now we can grab a spray can- ooh, they're actually slightly different shades of green. It's not all just one green. Alright, well then we'll take the one that is the most full. That would be you, sir. And just start a spraying. Hmm, you don't appear to be quite the same. I wonder if there's a way to, like, polish you so that you're actually, like, smooth like the other parts? But in the meantime, this will do just fine, I think. Oh, what are you... I saw you flying around and then immediately go back to pretending to be an ornament as I approached you. This game takes place in the Toy Story universe. Also, I seem to have already lost track of the wire brush. Like, I put it back here and now it's just gone. It's not on the floor or anything. Busted. Totally busted, buddy. Then again, I suppose it is appropriate that you're flying high over this house. Well, you know what? We learned a lot. We gained a friend. We fixed up our car and made it ten times juicier than ever. Although this door doesn't really seem to quite fit.
fit, does it? And we'll have to find a better replacement, but whatever, I'm happy. Wow, this car ain't doing too well either. Uh, hang on, can we crawl under you and get at what's over there? <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm going to show a screenshot on the screen of what it looks like when you do this. Anyway, if you don't mind me sitting right here, I really wish you could, like, sleep in the coffins. I mean, we can, but I'd like to, you know, make more of a show of lying down in it. Let's just wait until nightfall so we can end this on a properly spooky note. Oh, I like that camera angle. And just the perfect time to go. Leaving, leaving for a road trip when it's still dark out, always among my favorite things. I mean, you always got to be just a little bit drowsy, I think, to have your mind in the right place to question what that shape was on the side of the road. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be putting these videos out super regularly. It is going to be very much an occasional thing, but I'm very much looking forward to doing more. And, well, if, if what I've read online is correct about the actual length of this road, and with the ever-changing and yet still timeless nature of road stories themselves, I think we're going to have material for a long time. But, if you like this video... Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. Uh, I think we ran it over. Oh wait, wow, we just ended up right in the, in the garage. Okay, maybe let's turn the lights on and get out of here. Well, that was an exciting outro. Uh, Maybe we try that again. Wait, why can't I move? All right, there we go. Let's try that again. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Oh, there's nothing there's nothing like a scare right as you get in the car to make you feel like you're being pursued even when you know you're not. <laughs>